Alright, for this next tutorial we're going to have a bit of a look through the settings menu and just see what we need to set in Trainsim World 6 that we have not had in Trainsim World 5 or perhaps things that just need to be set. So notifications are fine, control notifications, these are the prompts that uh, pop up when you're doing things in the loco, I'm happy to have those there for the moment. Screenshot quality high, can we go better than that? No, normal and high. Volumetric fog, yes. Hide the UI in rail fan shots, yes. Motion blur, get rid of that. Ah, save game enabled, yes. Product suggestions, oh, whatever. Enable random behaviors, yes. Uh, our random behavior frequency, so there's normal, high, and low. Low means hardly ever happens, normal means occasionally, and high means almost guaranteed in a run. So uh, let's put that at normal for now. Uh, signal delays enabled, yes. Temporary speed restrictions enabled, yes. Train faults enabled, yes. Enable all timetable layers. Now, if you've got a PC with uh, plenty of capacity, and I mean plenty of capacity, don't think your 10 year old gaming PC and you can turn this on. So, I'm talking about people with a probably around a 4080 or better and 32 meg. 32 gig, sorry, where am I living? What century was that in? 32 gig or better of memory and a decent processor. So I'd go with an i7 or an i9 or the AMD equivalent. I wouldn't turn this on on consoles. It'll just catch fire. All right, let's apply all of those and let's pop back out and go to the next menu, which is accessibility. Subtitles, we will leave those on. That subtitles for the voiceover. Colorblind mode, I'll leave that off for me, but if you need it, you can, of course, turn it on and change the uh, settings for it. Default movement, run, yes. Speedometer size, small and large. We'll leave that at small. Crosshair visibility, we will change that to 50%. And auto hide, we will turn on. So that makes it a small dot and it will disappear. Lightning effects, we want those, and arcing effects. So if you have epilepsy or a similar flash-triggered condition, you may want to turn both of these off. HUD type, minimal, absolutely. So there's off, normal, simple, and minimal. I prefer minimal myself. That's the one where it's got the little small boxes up in the top left-hand corner. Show the score, I don't care, I'll hide that. Show current speed, no, I want to be forced to use the speedometer in the train, thank you very much. Apply, okay, let's go on to audio. Now, I know, you know, Ben, you did an awesome job, but I'm not that big a fan of menu music, so let me turn it right down. All right, the other volume controls can stay where they are. I will leave the ambience stuff where it is for now. Uh, platform announcements, I'll leave all of those. Cab announcements. Now, cab announcements are a little bit unprototypical. You wouldn't actually be able to hear train announcements in many cabs. If the cab's connected to the passenger space, you would, but generally no. But for interest of having the announcements, you can have them on if you want. And you can have all train announcements on or off, internal passenger noise, so as the passenger numbers build up, you will hear them more and more. Again, you probably wouldn't actually hear this in the cab of a locomotive. So, you know, you might want to run it at zero, or you might want to hear it. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it on, because I'm just kind of curious. Now, window audio focus. Being a streamer, I want that off, because what that means is, is when my cursor goes away from the game, it starts making noise, and I don't want that because if I pop out to Discord or something else during a stream, I don't really want people to lose the audio. All right, we will apply that and go back. Controls. Um, I'm not going to change anything in the controls, but there is one thing that I want to see. Uh, it is detecting my rail driver, which is interesting because I'm actually running the TSCX controller, but it's not calibrated. Um, I'll make a separate video about calibrating that another time when I've got a camera set up to show the controller. So we'll leave all of these alone for the moment, I think. And let's pop into the next one. Dovetail Live, so it's already picked me up. Um, and it's <laughs> it's got the wrong login, but that's okay. That's fine. It should have my normal TSD one, but uh, it's clearly picked up the preview one from the from 5. We'll fix that later. All right, advanced settings, foliage quality. 
ultra i think that can only be high so that looks like it's picked up my settings from the other one 62 fps i want to drop that back down to 60 which is where i keep it set i find the game is less stuttery and less choppy if you force the frame rate because when it surges ahead most my machine most of the time can do about 120 but it will drop back down to 45 or 50 occasionally so it's less noticeable if you keep it at 60 and 60 is perfect for recording as well anti-aliasing we've got taa or fxaa i prefer temporal which is taa uh, vsync i have that off because i run in a window screen percentage of 100 i normally run that a bit higher to get better quality so i'm going to put that up to 150. what this does is it over renders and then it downsizes it back to your resolution so use that uh consider your what your gpu can actually do very important vehicle substitutions livery substitutions formation substitutions and allow mods now this is a new one allow mods well, i'm going to enable that we'll see what it does don't know is there a mod manager now don't know all right uh, advanced settings that's just where we were don't be silly all right screen we've done this before we've set up our screen as 2560 which is 2k that's what i run at and i run a window in the middle of my giant 5k curved monitor and that works well for me for streaming um when i'm playing by myself i do actually like to run full screen though player assist i'm gonna leave that at expert um, i'm not gonna have automatic coupling or automatic setting of the junctions uh, notifications or expert mode notifications i may want to turn on because i think that includes things like the pzb helper so let's turn that on. i'm not 100 sure on that but let's turn that on hud and gameplay disable junction derail we will that on objective marker off uh, this means if i go through a switch the wrong way it won't derail me it will flip the switch i think i want that stop marker don't want that scenario marker no next bead marker off next signal marker is off next signal aspect is on uh, next speed limit hud is off next signal in the hud is off track monitor is on display safety system helper oh well that that's with that one okay maybe we don't need the other one i turned on HUD objective distance, this is two, and it's it's just two in whatever the thing is for that route. So it's either two kilometers or two miles, which I use. You can have four. I find that shows too many red signals because the signal's only clear just in front of you. So um, I usually run that at two. Markers on the track monitor, yes. Minimal HUD traction lock, we don't want that. Minimal HUD distance shown, yes. Camera motion sway on, but we leave that at 100%. Immersion camera switch will be head out, that's fine. Measurement units, automatic. Uh, all of the units are on automatic, which is perfect. Steam firing mode, it doesn't really matter. You put it on manual, it doesn't, really, doesn't really do anything. There's people who swear it does stuff, and it really doesn't. So that's fine. They can believe it if they want to. Include training modules and quick play, no. Suspension model, improved, standard, hmm, okay. Digital display screen view. If you're on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox, you may want to leave this set at classic because what it does is when you click on a digital screen, it zooms into it and then you can activate it. But that doesn't actually work on the console, so you need to set them to classic. Conductor mode control guide. We'll leave that on for now. It's uh, helpful to get a run through on the, the new trains. It seems to figure out what you've done anyway and it remembers right so that's about it for our setup for the game so that's it for another tutorial if you've got any questions chuck them down below and i'll see what i can do to help you out and that's just setting it for my settings so you might have different settings there's nothing wrong with having different ones Alrighty, have fun folks enjoy yourselves and yeah like and subscribe and all that sort of fun stuff bye now we played a game